Hello, dear students. In this session, uh, we will derive some uh, or we will learn some basics like linear momentum, loss of motion, all those things that you have studied in your high school days. And also, we are going to derive in uh, derivation for uh, f is equal to m a, and we'll solve one problem. Okay. The first thing is linear momentum. You know it. It is a product of mass and velocity. It is the product of mass of the body and its velocity. Linear momentum. You might be knowing it already. Okay. Linear momentum P is equal to m into v equation. P is equal to m into v. Mass is a scalar. Velocity is a vector. Therefore, linear momentum is also a vector. Linear momentum is also a vector. What might be its unit? Mass is measured in kg. Okay. Velocity is measured in meter per second. So SI unit, okay, SI unit of SI unit of linear momentum will be kg meter per second, kg meter per second. Okay. Now uh, I have this equation P is equal to m into v. Say m is constant. Okay. If m is constant, if m is constant in this equation, then P, linear momentum, is directly proportional to V. Correct now. Linear momentum is directly proportional to V. Then, <coughs> if you plot a graph, okay, P versus V, then you get a graph, a straight line. As the velocity increases, linear momentum also increases. Okay. If V is constant, if V is constant, if V is constant, okay, then what happens? Then what happens? Linear momentum is directly proportional to mass. <coughs> Linear momentum is directly proportional to mass. Then, then if you plot a graph, linear momentum versus mass, then you get a straight line. Okay. Uh, if uh, linear momentum is constant, okay. If linear momentum is constant, I'll write here. If p is constant, if p is constant, then what happens? Constant equal to m into v, correct now, then m is inversely proportional to v, m and v are inversely proportional because c by m equal to v, they are inversely proportional, okay, uh, as velocity increases, mass decreases, as velocity increases, mass decreases in order to keep linear momentum constant, then if you uh, plot a graph, okay, uh, between m versus v, that will give you a rectangular hyperbola. Okay, as uh, mass increases, as mass as velocity increases, as velocity increases, mass decreases. Okay. Now, uh, say if you uh, okay, when momentum is constant, say if there are two bodies. Okay, if there are two bodies, then I can write m1 v1 if the momentum is constant m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 okay uh, we will see it little later so because in the next session i'm going to solve problems based on linear momentum then we will try to understand basically for this session you try to remember that momentum p is equal to mass into velocity okay if the if mass is constant momentum is directly proportional to velocity if velocity is constant then momentum is directly proportional to mass okay if momentum is constant, then mass and velocity are inversely proportional to each other. Momentum is constant, then as the velocity increases, mass should decrease in order to keep the momentum constant. Okay. Then we will see what is Newton's first law. Okay, you have already studied this. I <coughs> will read out. If a body continues to be in its state of rest or of its uniform motion along a straight line, unless unless it is acted upon by some unbalanced external force to change the state. Okay, unbalanced external force. Okay. In simple words, okay, Newton's first law can be stated like this. If a body is at rest, it will be at rest. Okay. Until you apply some unbalanced external force. Okay. If a body is moving, it will be moving. But if you have to change its state of rest or its state of uniform motion, what you have to do? You have to apply external force. Say, for example, for example, 
there is a body of mass m on the floor now whether there is a force acting on the body whether there is a force acting on the body think there is force acting on the body the force acting on the body is gravitational force so for example you have kept your mobile phone on the table it is not moving now even though gravitational force is acting on it correct na why because there is a there is something called reaction force which is upwards that we are going to study after three four sessions there is a reaction force means this gravitational force is balanced by reaction force okay there is a balanced force okay net force on your mobile phone is zero correct that is why it is not moving that is why in this definition you have to observe if there is a unbalanced external force acting on the body then the body will change its state of rest or of its uniform motion okay means if you apply a force in this direction if you apply a force in this direction now there is no force in this direction there cannot be a balance in this direction then the body starts accelerating in this direction okay this is the meaning of this word unbalanced external force has to be applied okay why if there is a body at rest on the floor already there is gravitational force okay but that gravitational force is balanced by reaction force these two forces they get cancelled okay there should be a, an unbalanced force okay then only the body will move okay a body continues to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion along a straight line unless unless it is acted upon by some unbalanced external force to change the state okay try to remember you already uh, know this uh, statement i hope you write the statement okay then try to understand second law second law states that uh, second law i think you might have uh, learnt like this force is equal to force is the product of mass and acceleration you might have heard learnt like that but uh, this is the better way of presenting it the rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force applied on the body and this change takes place in the direction of force applied what is the meaning meaning of this statement is rate of change of linear momentum means dp by dt hope you can understand how do you write rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity means you write like this na hmm? rate of change of displacement means how to write like this how do we define velocity velocity equal to rate of change of displacement acceleration equal to rate of change of velocity how to write rate of change of velocity dv by dt rate of change of displacement dx by dt then uh, oh my god what happened okay something has happened we will erase here okay uh yeah therefore rate of change of linear momentum means what rate of change of linear momentum can be written as dp by dt because p is how we represent linear momentum is equal to or is directly proportional to external force then we can prove that it is equal to f okay dp by dt is equal to f this is the meaning and uh this change okay some some uh, the letters have been jumbled up. this change takes place in the direction of force applied okay change takes place in the direction of force applied it means uh, if there is a body of uh, uh, mass m here and you apply force okay there will be change in momentum the direction of change in momentum the direction of change in momentum will be in the direction of force of course so if there is a body you apply a force in this direction okay it should its momentum should its momentum should change in the same direction that is natural okay and uh, uh, using this equation we are going to prove the equation f is equal to ma okay within one or two minutes okay we will discuss it once again there then we have studied you have studied this uh, newton's third law 
it says that to every action there is an equal and opposite reactions to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction if there is a body uh, a and if there is a body b okay if these two bodies collide okay then force on a due to b okay force on a due to b should be equal and opposite to force on body b due to a okay so this is what the meaning of newton's third law to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction okay what does it mean force on a body should be equal and opposite to force on other another body reaction force on body a due to b is equal and opposite to force on body b due to a so this is the meaning so we will try to understand this better by solving some problems so here what i'll do i'll try to derive f is equal to m a okay derivation of derivation of f is equal to m into a this is a very simple derivation okay concentrate concentrate so f is equal to m a is newton's second law correct now in high school you have studied the same correct now what is newton's second law says the rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force dp by dt is equal to f okay we will take it so in the examination they will use they will usually ask like this state newton's second law and prove f is equal to ma okay yeah f is equal to ma and according to newton's second law what newton's second law says according to newton's second law rate of change of linear momentum is directly proportional to applied force is directly proportional to applied force or dp by dt dp by dt is equal to some proportionality constant k okay some proportionality constant k into f or i'll write like this or what i'll do f is equal to some proportionality constant k into dp by dt now what is p what is p linear momentum what is the equation for linear momentum you know that p is equal to m into v correct now let us make a substitution there what happens what happens f is equal to f is equal to k into differentiation of m into v okay this is interesting now what is m m is a constant correct now we'll take m is a constant for a body which is moving with some velocity v so f is equal to k into while learning differentiation we have studied differentiation of 5x means 5 we are taking outside because it is constant correct now so we'll take this m outside so what happens k into m m into dv by dt just now we have discussed what is dv by dt rate of change of velocity acceleration so what happened f is equal to f is equal to k into k into m into a k into m into a but in si units we take value of k is equal to 1 value of k is equal to 1 in si units in si units value of k is equal to 1 so therefore we get f is equal to m into a so this is the equation for force i think this is what you have studied in your high school okay when you come to pu uh, uh, there will be a derivation okay this derivation is us usually asked in the examination very simple you write f is directly proportional to dp by dt f is equal to k into dp by dt say this you will have to use this technique many times in puc okay proportionality if you have to remove proportionality symbol okay you have to introduce a proportionality constant okay equal to some proportionality constant into dp by dt substitute for this p m into v mass is constant taken outside dv by dt means acceleration okay then we got f is equal to m into a <clears throat> now we can define force say for example here i can write 1 newton is equal to 1 kg into 1 meter per second square correct na then how to define force okay <clears throat> say you have applied a force you have applied a force on a body of mass 1 kg okay you have applied a force on a body of mass 1 kg then it starts accelerating with an acceleration of 1 meter per second square 
you have applied a force on a body of 1 kg okay and it starts accelerating with an acceleration of 1 meters per second square then the force that you have applied is 1 newton because 1 into 1 will give you 1 so that is how we define force okay next we will solve a simple problem a constant force acting on a body of mass 3 kg changes its speed from 2 meter per second to 3 meter per second in 25 seconds calculate the magnitude of force okay we have to calculate force okay force force means what do we have in our mind f is equal to m into a okay whether mass is given mass is given whether acceleration is given acceleration is not given but change in velocity is given final velocity is given initial velocity is given time is given a can be found out using the equation v is equal to u plus at correct na correct na or what is acceleration acceleration equal to v minus u divided by t correct na so what happens f is equal to m into a in the place of a i'll write that v minus u divided by t huh. now what is m m is 3 kg into v minus u 3.5 final velocity minus initial velocity 3.5 minus 2 divided by 25 now there is a simplification so f is equal to 3 into 3.5 minus 2 is 1.5 uh, 1.5 uh, by 25 okay mm -hmm. so what happened 3 into um, 5 goes uh, 5 times here 5 goes uh, 0 0.3 times okay correct now 5 into 3 is 15 5 into 0 0.3 is 1.5 correct now so 0 3 into 0 0.3 I this. 3 into 0 0.3 is 0 0.9 0 0.9 by 5 0 0.9 by 5 what is 9 by 5 9 by 5 is 1.8 correct now 9 by 5 is 1.8 0 0.9 by 5 is 0 0.18 0 0.18 so answer is 0 0.98 newton I hope you understood this the moment you have to see the question first Calculate the magnitude of force. Okay, force means I remember F equal to MA. Okay, then you have to observe the question. What is given? Mass is given. Acceleration is not directly given, but the hint is given. Final velocity is given. Initial velocity is given. Time is given. So we remember V is equal to U plus AT. Acceleration equal to V minus U by T. Okay, in the place of acceleration, we write this equation. Substitute everything. Simplify. We get the answer. Simple? Yeah. Hope you understood the uh, derivation of f is equal to ma and you have revised uh, the definition of linear momentum in newton's first law second law third law okay and the problems okay please make a notes okay thank you very much